We are back with our regularly scheduled programming. <laughs> it has been a whirlwind of a few days. While some of the wrestle, uh, while some of the BC WrestlePod boys were out chilling, watching wrestling, half of us were in New Jersey, <laughs> putting in the Lord's work, so to speak. <laughs> Y'all were. It was a lot of fun, but it was definitely a lot of work, but it definitely was worth it because not only did we get to great interviews, but we also did some networking, which me and you can talk about when we're done because we are here to cover WWE NXT. This is the dynamic dominance trio question mark review DDT for short. <laughs> Stay tuned for the end of this episode because we're going to make a announcement because there are some changes on behind the scenes and things like that, but uh, I'll make that announcement at the end. But I am one of your hosts for the DDT reviews, Mikey, also known as El Jefe around these parts. I am the boss man, I guess. I am the man with half a plan and the face that kind of runs the place somewhat. Mm. And joined with me is my lovely co-host, who I have missed so dearly, even though it's only been a week since we last saw each other. <laughs> It feels a lot longer. The convention made it feel so much longer than it actually was. That's but, fair. Yeah, but Will, also known by his alias as Papa, also is in the house. I have missed you, my um, friend. I missed you guys, too. <laughs> I missed you, too. I mean, it was really funny. I was like, oh, I have a week off. And then it was like, oh, I have a week off. It was weird. I know. it. It's it was, it was It's been really weird. No TNA last <sighs> week, which... We'll discuss that on Friday, but that main event was actually kind of fire. <laughs> it was. I agree. <laughs> and I had no one to talk to about it. <laughs> Just like, that's all right. I <laughs> cannot wait. So we're supposed to get the boys that went to the convention. We're supposed to get together to do like a story time podcast and invite all the other boys to come listen to us. But we're still trying to figure that out. But. You could tell that we're talking about other things because this NXT episode was it was all right, I guess it wasn't sure. bad. It wasn't horrible. It's just it's a trend that I'm not really on board with. <laughs> yeah, it kind of makes it hard. And that kind of plays into the announcement that I'm going to be talking about at the end of this episode. But we are in the midst towards the build for Battleground, which is NXT's next pay-per-view, which is in. Two weeks at this point, which is kind of nuts to think about. Mm. <laughs> and so we are continuing with qualifying matches. We're also getting other things built for Battleground, as well as also trying to tell other stories that aren't going to be on said pay-per-view. But uh, we'll, we'll get into those moments as we go through the episodes. Unfortunately, Andrew is not going to be here tonight. And uh, again... I keep reiterating this, but more to come by the end of the show. But let's get into it. Yep. We NXT opens up. We have another NXT Women's North American Championship qualifying match. And this one kind of made me frustrated because I was like, you could have had these two fight it out in the ladder match, but it was not meant to be. So this qualifying match that opened up NXT was Fallon Henley versus Thea Hale. And they were fighting for a spot in the ladder match to crown the inaugural NXT Women's North American Champion at Battleground. So far, after last week, we have Sol Ruka and Lash Legend in the mix, and this was to see who would get the third spot. <sighs> mm. Mine, so I have a couple, so being objective and looking at the match itself, I actually really enjoyed it. I really, really did. I kind of wish that this wasn't for the spot at the ladder match. And this was an actual match that was going to happen at battleground between these two. But I think the match was fun. It was great. Both women showed up. My issues with this match come in the form of that chase. You felt unnecessary to be there. <sighs> yeah. 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 You know, I love Chase U, don't get me wrong. But I don't understand the constant interference from Chase U. You know, it's like constant. 
and then, and I'm not just necessarily talking about physical interference. Just them being on the the sidelines is so distracting that I'm just like, can you just not let your your fighters go out and fight on their own? Support them from the freaking audience if you have to support them for some reason. I don't know. Just get the hell off of ringside. It drives me insane. And then there's the physical interference with Chase U that we've been having a lot of lately, which is getting old. I'm sorry. And and this is going to go into my frustrations about this first match <laughs> anyway. Because, again, the match itself was not a bad match. It should not have happened here. Like Mikey said, it should have happened at the ladder match. That's where it should have happened. Because... Here's where my frustration lies with, I think, the company, I think is what it is, the promotions folks, is they have been building Thea Hale up for what now? It almost six months, give or take, maybe more. And they have been building her up to something big because the thing they've, the storylines they've been putting her in have not just been like blow off silly stuff. I mean, some of it's been silly, but a lot of it's been almost like a complete character reinvention. Like she's discovering who she is on her own, as opposed to what other people think of her as, you know, cause you had chase you who kind of formed her into the original Thea Hale. And then JC came around and kind of turned her into a clone, which was cool. And I loved that whole storyline. And then suddenly we have Thea become what I believe is like the, you know, the true Thea Hale. This, this sort of just crazy, you know, guard dog, almost, you know, that could go either way, almost. And then setting her up, for me anyway, as as a viewer, setting her up as a contender, like I, I, I honestly and truly believe that she was going to be in the final, the final match. I really did. I thought she was going to be one of, and they built her up like that. And then, then the thing with Fallon, and I love Fallon. Don't get me wrong, but her whole thing was like so last minute, and then all of a sudden she's in it, and I'm like, what the hell is that? And I don't understand why Fallon could not have gone to the final as her other self. I don't understand why that she had to become a basically become a bitch. I don't understand why. So I'm so frustrated with this the story lot the stories aspects. Not the the like I said the match itself was actually pretty good because I like both of these wrestlers, but. I don't know why the WWE, I guess, I I don't know why they set up these amazing stories to build these wrestlers to amazing points and then just forget about them or sweep them under the carpet because they, oh, we found a new toy that's shiny and cool. So we're going to get rid of that one and put this one in its place. We just because we found it and we're like, oh my god, this is amazing. Okay, you're we don't want you anymore. Oh my god, let's put this in there. And that's what it feels like with Fallon. This this heel turn that she's done was so quick. I mean, there was there was no build to it. We never I never saw anything. You know, I saw the she wants to go out on her own. We saw all that. You know, when the the trio split up, we saw that. And I don't understand also, and this is going to go to something later that we're going to talk about later, is I don't understand why (laughs) two of the three of that group have gone to the dark side. Like, I don't understand it. You know, like when I'm talking about Josh, I'm talking about Briggs, Josh Briggs. He he was like, yeah, I'm I'm really great. And to all of a sudden, it's like, I'm going to destroy you all. And I'm just like, what the hell happened? I mean, are they what are they drinking weird Kool-Aid? I don't understand. And and one of them got out of it, you know. It's like it's like, you know, but I'm it's just this the yeah, this the, I'm so frustrated right now with whatever this is. 
And, 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 you know, and the Ridge Holland thing is really starting to get on my damn nerves too. I'm like, what are you fucking doing with this guy? Excuse my language. What are you doing with this dude? I mean, seriously, he's not a bad wrestler. He's generally pretty good at like speaking. He's not unintelligible. He's not, you know, let me, let me rip, you know, rip my ears off. I mean, he's pretty decent. So what the hell are we doing with him? I don't understand whatever this is. And then it's now we've gotten him mixed in with Chase U. And now he's suddenly on and, you know, pulling chairs out of people's hands or getting caught with, you know, accidentally getting caught with the weapon and, and villainizing the guy. I don't, I don't understand. I'm so, and I'm, I know I'm on a soapbox right now. <laughs> it's like, but it just irritated the crap out of me after I watched the match and I was like, Oh wow, that was a really great match. Now I'm pissed because now Thea's out of the running. And I honestly believe it's time to put her in the running for a championship. She needs to be in a championship run. And I think she's earned it. I really do. I really think she's, she has put in the work. And I'm not saying Fallon hasn't, or Sol Ruka, or the I'm I'm not or Lash. I mean, I know they have, but they have put Thea through the ringer, and she's done it. That's the thing. She has gone with whatever storyline they've thrown at her, and she is committed to it. And then this is how you reward her. I this I didn't get. I was so angry after this match. You know, I was like, yay, Fallon, because I love you. But I was like, this made no damn sense to me. It made no sense to me. And it it, it literally, <laughs> I stopped watching for like two hours because I was so angry. <laughs> I was literally, I was like, Rrr. and then I was talking to a, one of my students and he's, and he was like, are you okay? And I was like, no. And I told him the whole thing. And he's one of my one of my theater students who also watches wrestling. He comes and talks to me every morning, asking me if I saw this or saw that. And we have conversations, but I was telling him what I was so mad about. And he's like, he's like, he's like, okay, okay. He's like, you know, what I do is I go, like, I walk away and he's like, and I go and like have a glass of milk. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> he's like, He's like, maybe you should. You need to go have a glass of milk, whatever that is for you. It doesn't have to be a glass of milk, but it needs to go something to kind of pull your mind off of, you know, that. Yeah, and I was like, oh, okay, wise words from you know a nineteen year old. Uh, and I was like, okay, all right, you're, maybe you're right. So I went and I built something because that's my glass of milk. Because I'm a theater person, and I was like, I'm going to build a set piece. So I went and built a set piece, and and it did. It took my mind off, and so I went back. And watch the rest, but I was so mad, and I'm, and I'll stop talking here now. But it just, yeah, it really, and and the, and the whole episode kind of made me feel that way. There's a couple of great moments, I think, in the episode, but for the most part, it just made me, just made me feel frustrated, almost like my time has been wasted, and I, and I don't like that. You know what I mean? So, right. So I'll That's... let you talk. <laughs> I mean, you pretty much said everything I was going to say. I think that as fun as I this match was, I think JC being out there doesn't add anything except to set up drama, which we will mm-hmm. get to later in the episode. But the other yeah. thing that kind of happened from this is that after the match is over, Jasmine Nix comes out and beats up Thea to get yeah. revenge mm-hmm. on her. I know Jasmine is the stand-in for JC until JC's cleared to come back in the ring after getting her nose broken. Mm. But I'm just like, we've been doing this for weeks now. Like, we gotta, we gotta Move add the on. next, dim- we gotta <laughs> add the next dimension into the story or whatever. But <sighs> Fallon is moving on to the ladder match at Battleground. I still think it's going to be a fantastic one. Oh, kind of yeah. wish that Thea was in there because I think Thea deserves <sighs> to be in there. But that's neither here nor there. So after the match is over, we cut backstage where we have the family with Axiom and Nathan Frazier. And I'm just going to summarize this whole thing. The family kind of conned their way into an NXT championship match with the tag titles later. And 
you know, because the family tells Nathan and Axiom that they've been ducking the OC and they're not giving title shots out. So they give a title shot to the family, which we'll talk about that match because I actually really <laughs> well, we'll talk about that later. But yeah, this sets up that we're going to have a tag team championship match. I'm like, cool, I guess. Then we're backstage with our interviewer and she is with the Gallus boys. I I cannot lie, Will. I had to rewatch this promo because that accent is thick as hell. Yeah. I was like, first I had to go over it because as soon as he opened his mouth and started talking, I melted into like a pool of butter. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh my gosh. And I'm like, all right, let's, let's, mm. it's like, not now. Let's focus on this later. I had to watch it a couple times because that accent was thick. But literally, th- all this promo did was set up the fact that the Gallus boys are back. And it doesn't matter who it is. The Gallus boys are going to, as you said, off camera, they're going to stir some mess up. So I'm like, all right, well, there's that, mm. Mark. And, you know, we'll talk more about the Gallus boys because they were all over the show on this episode. So we get into our next match. This is for the NXT Tag Team Championships. This is Axiom and Nathan Frazier defending their titles against the family, which is being represented by Stax and then Luca Crucifino. Yo, this match actually kind of went hard. <laughs> like, it, I was it, like, it did. I was like, damn. I was like, and I was like, yo, the family kind of looks great here. I was like, holy crap. I think this is their best performance as a tag team between these two. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I mean, I guess they're setting, I guess they're setting stacks, and I guess this is going to be their new tag team, right? Do you think that's what this is it? Because, you know, I think so, at least because Tony's going to go. He's going to be a solo fighter. It feels like that, that's all mm-hmm. he wants to do, which is fine because I enjoy his style. But so, yeah, this I actually as much as I'm kind of over the stereotype of this of the family, I, I, I did. I really enjoyed this. I actually really enjoyed them together fighting together. I actually didn't mind them i thought i was going to because we're, we're so used to you know tony and stacks fighting together mm-hmm. that I, I wasn't sure how they were gonna if they were gonna gel or not. i don't know I, I don't there was something that was that was sitting on me and i didn't know what it was and and i was actually very pleasantly surprised i was actually kind of like oh okay you're not bad actually you know i still don't, i don't want you to win but because i'm really not liking the family right now but yeah I thought they fought well together, though. This And this was this match actually was really good. This. Yeah, I thought this match was really good. But due to a slight distraction slash interference from the no quarter catch crew who came up to get a lick back after being kidnapped by the family, allowed Nathan Frazier for the most devastating move in all professional wrestling, a surprise roll up to have Axiom and Nathan Frazier retained the NXT Tag Team Championships, but they don't get to celebrate long because the OC come from behind and attack our champions. And the, we end this match slash segment with the OC holding the NXT Tag Team Championships high above their heads. I'm like, we knew this is where it was leading. You could have pulled the trigger sooner, but I'm pretty sure this is the match that we're getting at Battleground for the tag titles. <laughs> Hmm. And I could, I'm going to be honest, I could care less, which is sad. Yeah, I know. Story yeah, hasn't I, been great. It, and it hasn't. The, the OC to me is not the tag team that I no. want to see. No. Go up against Nathan and Axiom. No. Because, you know, and it's like, I don't think they've earned it. And I know some people out there are probably going to disagree with me, but I don't think they've earned it. I mean, they just showed up, first of all. And just sort of like. Knock their way into everything and not in a we deserve a shot at this because we've earned it. No, they're more like we deserve a shot at this because we say we do. And, you know, me personally, if I was Nathan or Axiom, I would tell them to take, you know, take their fish and chips and shove it up their butts. You know, I mean, seriously, I'd be like, I don't have to fight you. We don't need to fight you. You you know, I mean, you you buy, buy Felicia and walk away because, I mean, you need to freaking earn it. And I'm, you know, I'm a big, big, big big advocate <laughs> of earning your way into things, not bullying your way into things because so earn it. 
go fight some other folks and earn your earn your way up. And because the best thing in the world that has happened is Nathan and Axiom holding these titles. This is like absolute. I've you know I've been I for the longest time I was waiting for them to get these titles because they earned them. They this is what I love about and this is what I love about these two guys is they were constantly like, hey, we'd like to, you know, we'd like to go up against you guys. Can we go up against you guys? Hey, can we wrestle? Can we do this and stuff? And they like worked their way up. You know, they didn't bully their way into anything. They didn't force them. Eh, maybe they a little forced themselves a little bit, but that's okay. But they didn't like bully their way in. They literally like, hey, or <laughs> Or, you know, Nathan opened his mouth and talked while people were, like, in the room. But, you know, it's like, and, and things like that. But, I mean, I, I don't want, I, the, I'm not a fan of OC. I'm not a fan. And I think it's because of the way they were introduced. Yeah, that introduction didn't do any favor. No. And it's really weird, too, because, like, the OC and Meechin are all part of the same faction. But Meechin is so ten times more better than the OC. And in the little screen time that we got of Meechin, and like she's had one match in NXT so far, and I'm just like, oh yeah, she's definitely the star for me out of these three. And I'm, I might be biased because I like women's wrestling, but honestly, I know the OC have been wrestling for a very long time, and I don't want to take that away from them because they've had a story career across <laughs> multiple promotions. I just don't care enough about them in this particular storyline mm -hmm. Because it doesn't, there's nothing here to make me believe the OC has an actual chance of taking the titles. And if right. they do take the titles, I feel that's going to backfire on NXT. So we'll, we'll, we're, I'm pretty sure that we're getting this match at Battleground, but mm -hmm. we'll see what happens with all that. Because moving on from here, speaking of other things of earning your way. <sighs> Lexus King is about to later in the show earn this can of whoop ass later in his match. Because yep. Lexus King is still being Lexus King. And he's antagon he literally called he called Robert Stone's children stupid. <laughs> like uh -huh. holy I was like, uh and I love how Ava is like Ava's my favorite GM because she's just petty when she makes matches. She's just like, oh, yeah. okay. I was like, you won't have a match tonight, but you're going to find out your opponent later in the evening. So, uh, bye. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> nice to see Mr. Stone back on my television screen. Obviously, he is without a Mr. Von Wagner mm. since Von got released in the last couple of weeks. And uh, we'll talk more about this because I'm like, I don't know where we're going with this, but we'll we'll, we'll talk about this. Because then this leads into the blowout between Chase U and Rich Holland. Mostly, this is Riley Osborne, like about to full ham and cheese deck, ham and cheese decker <laughs> Ridge Holland in the face. This is what I don't understand. So all this is is that the sets up a match mm. between the two of them next week because they gotta work out their differences, which is cool. Whatever. My biggest question mark that I have in this whole entire thing, I hated that Riley says it's like Ridge cost Thea the match. I'm like, no, Thea cost Thea her match. <laughs> like. She lost fair and square, even though there was chicanery and tomfoolery from Jasmine Nix. By all intents and purposes, Fallon won on her mm -hmm. own accord. Mm -hmm. So, Riley, I understand where you're coming from, but did you watch the same match we did? The loss of her own accord. And so things get heated, and Andre Chase says that they got to settle it in the ring next week. They can't be coming to blows like this. I'm just like, so are we just going to disregard Thea's feelings and her, you know, not making it up? Sure, fine, whatever. I just need Thea to go by herself and I need her and Ridge to go on their own. Like, I will watch a whole, I will watch all the NXT if Ridge and Thea go off on their own. Yeah, me too. Yeah, you know, this is, this is another issue I have. Is that... <laughs> This idea, this is, you know, the, you know, the white knight syndrome. You know, Thea, Thea loses her match and she lost her match. She did. Am I happy about it? No, but she did. She, she lost it. It was, I believe it was fair and square. There was no, even though I know Fallon grabbed a chair and blah, blah, blah. 
But, you know, Ridge took it away. And so she had to win that match on her own. And she did. Now, all of a sudden, the boys have to get together and be like, I have to, you know, defend her honor. Basically, I have to come. She's a damsel in distress. I have to do that. No, you don't. No, you don't. You know what you need to do? You need to you need to fight Ridge Holland for your own damn reason. And this is this is where again where I'm getting frustrated with Chase U is because now all of a sudden they're like, we have to fight anybody who disrespects our women. I'm like, I get that. But your women can hold their own. <laughs> I'm like, th- I mean, they could probably whoop your butt. <laughs> Riley, <laughs> Thea could probably whoop your butt. Well, of course she could, because it'd be very much a, a a Wonder Woman Superman thing, where Superman's like, "Oh, I won't hit a woman," and she's like, "Well, then I'm going to beat your ass," and she does, you know. And again, this whole thing with Ridge, I'm like, stop. Okay, I'm stop persecuting the guy for trying to be a good guy. He was actually trying to be a good guy. And I don't know, and, you know, and it's so funny how they are turning him into a, they, they basically make him out to be a bad guy. And he's like, I'm literally stopped Fallon from hitting Thea with a chair. And then you're coming at me. This is, I didn't get, I didn't get this at all. This, you know, this is, I agree. The the Chase U involvement is getting extremely out of control and annoying. Thea needs to be like, you know what, you guys? Thank you so much for all your help, but I'm done. And walk away and go, come on, Ridge, let's go. And then take him away. I would be like, hell yeah, girl. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm, I'm ready for my, I'm ready for my, you know, Harley Quinn and Bane. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm waiting for it. But yeah, this whole segment irritated the crap out of me. Oh my goodness. This, yeah, this was, this was definitely a moment where I thought to myself, we got to pull the trigger on something here. Like, let, let's figure all this out. Yes, please. So we leave. So we're going to get a match between Riley and Ridge next week. So we'll see how that turns out. Which leads into our next match of the evening, the third one of the night. This is a number one contenders match to see who will go on to face Oba Femi for the NXT North American Championship match at a battleground. So, <laughs> I want to start off by saying this. I do not blame any of the performers in this match. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Because objectively, this match was really great. I just hated how we got to the final outcome, which was a triple threat. I will say, though, Mr. Coffee head budding Wesley in the middle of the air was a baller. I was like, well, damn. Mm-hmm. But as soon as I saw Wes land on Josh and J- Joe goes in for the pin, too, I was just like, don't tell me we're about to do what I think we do. Yep. And then we have a double pinfall victory with Joe and Wes winning. I'm like, oh, OK, so they tied. So they're going to have like a one on one match, which I'm here for to figure out. No. So I'm going to fast forward later in the evening where Ava says, you know, because we had two winners, it's going to be a triple threat between Wes, Oba, and Joe at Battleground for the NXT North American Championship. I'm like, boo! (laughs) You know what? mm, Yeah. This this was, the match itself was actually pretty pretty badass. I'm not going to lie. The three of them going, I was like, okay, this is actually a pretty damn good match. And I agree. The outcome annoyed the crap out of me because I knew what was happening. I was like, oh, OK. And I'm wondering. And here's my conspiracy theory. Mm-hmm. I wonder if they're putting Joe Joe into this. To help Wesley. Achieve the championship. And I don't mean like he that's why he did it. But like tiring Obafemi out, like literally causing West to win the championship, which I we all kind of hope happens. Right. And so I'm wondering because of his, you know, his back surgery that he had, I'm wondering if they're brought in another person 
to kind of buffer the you know the the onslaught of terror that Obafemi is. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? I mean, and I'm and again, no diss to Joe because Joe's an, is a great wrestler, but I really wonder if that's why they're doing it. Because I mean, honestly and truly, Joe coming into this out of nowhere, he literally comes into this out of nowhere, and it's like, hmm, I wonder. I'll let you talk because I keep, I see you keep trying to talk and I keep talking. <laughs> no, because I'm <laughs> contemplating on what you're saying. And ultimately, this is this is where my biggest frustration with NXT has been post stand and deliver. Because we had our issues with how we built a stand and deliver. But ultimately, we all said that stand and deliver. Well, for all intents and purposes, delivered. <laughs> yeah, and it did. And it got me excited. But post stand and deliver, we have made some questionable decisions and certain folks not being in NXT now since they got called up to the main roster or called over to the main roster. has definitely we see, we've seen some shifts and some storylines. And I know we're just trying to survive, but having Joe Coffey and Gallus come back and be put into this triple threat match. On the one hand, it makes me happy because that means that Wes is probably going to be protected this match and he's mm-hmm. not going to get pinned, which is good. However, I don't like the fact that you have Mark Coffey who is about to get pinned. Ultimately, I know that they're building for Wes to overcome Oba to regain the North mm-hmm. American Championship, yeah. which is the title he truly never lost to begin with because the sh- shenanigans that happened when Dominic Mysterio won that title from Wes all the way back into last year. It makes no sense to continue to have triple threats for this. It worked at stand and deliver because of the individuals that were in there. Now I'm excited for this triple threat. I think it's going to be a fantastic match at battleground, but you're just rinse and repeat what we had at stand and deliver. You just substitute Josh Briggs and Dijak with Joe coffee and Wes Lee. Like, I understand that you want to build Wes up so he can be the one to ultimately dethrone Oba, but I don't want these NXT North American Championship matches to continue to be triple threats. Yeah. Because it's... Let, let's try something different. That's all I'm asking. Well, yeah, and you know... Because to me, it feels like, oh, it won't work otherwise. Like, you know, I guess my whole thing is, is this. is Do they see it like, like you have Obafemi going up against, say, Wesley. And they are obviously two completely different wrestlers in both size, style, just all everything. Do do they believe, and this and this may be for the past main event, the past sort of title runs too. Do they honest do they believe that someone like Wes cannot take Obafemi out? I mean, is, and that, is that why they do a triple threat? You know, in, if we look back on the other ones, I'm just like, do they just not believe in their talent? You know, I guess, I don't know. I just, I don't get it. I think that if it's a title run, it needs to be a, two, a twofer. It needs to be two people, two men or two women in the ring fighting for a championship title. I think when you add, you know, a triple threat or a six man or a 12 man or a 72 man, whatever the hell you're doing, it complicates things. One, it's so chaotic that you have no idea what's going on. So now we're going to have these three men, three different fighting styles clashing in this ring we're not going to know what which way is up, which way is down. And maybe that's what they're wanting. Maybe they're wanting to keep the audience kind of in a I don't know what's going on phase. I, I don't know. For me, it's 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 just frustrating, you know. And again, because we look and this, this goes back to what I was saying earlier. We have Wesley. Who left to have back surgery, he you know, and he left. Then he came back, you know, ready to to get back in it. Everyone gave him shit for it, you know, and then we finally get to he comes in. He's like, I'm ready to do this. I'm ready to do this. And then you have people like Josh Briggs coming in going, hey, I'm going to do that. I'm like, dude, you've already had your shot. 
you're done. And Ivar, the same way, even though I do love me some Ivar, by the way. But I'm like, you've had your shot. You're done. And then all of a sudden, they're like, well, the three of us are going to fight him. And I'm like, why? I don't understand the purpose of that. We already, we've already seen Josh lose twice. I think we saw him twice, right? And Ivar lost. And why are we overcomplicating this? <laughs> you know, literally Wesley comes in and goes, hey, I'm here and I'm ready to try this. And then it should have been very much like, all right, all right, little man, bring it on and let's see what you got. And see, to me, that is more exciting than let's do this number one contender, you know, three-way threat fight. And then two people step out of the damn ring. And I'm like, what? That is so, and Joe, you know, and again, I love Joe and Mark and I, I love them. But out of freaking nowhere. And he's going to go to the pay-per-view and fight for a title against Wesley and Obafemi. And I'm, I'm so frustrated because I just want to see Obafemi fight Wesley. That's it. I, I don't need Josh Briggs. I don't need Ivar. I don't need Joe. I don't need Mark. I don't need any of the Gallus boys. I don't need. I just need to see these two men enter this ring and one of them walk out triumphantly, preferably Wesley, and then Obafemi go off to do any anything because I can probably guarantee you just about anybody would want him. I'd be great to see Obafemi go to TNA. <clears throat> anyway, uh, but I could be biased. But yeah, I just I just want to see these two men enter the ring. You know, it's like, you know, Thunderdome. Two men enter, one man leaves. That's what I want. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I want. Where You know, where's Tina Turner when you need her? <laughs> God rest her soul. Uh uh, uh, yeah, God rest her soul for sure. <laughs> I, you know, we can go be all night talking about this. I'm oh, so yeah. excited for the triple threat. I just wish that this wasn't the go to because I know that yeah. you want to keep Boba Femi looking strong and you want to keep Wesley, you know, safe until they pull the trigger for him to take the title. But like, God, come on, do something different. Yes, that. Which that phrase is going to come up later when we talk about a certain other match that got made for Battleground at the end of the night. But oh, we yeah. move on. We move <laughs> on from this. We're backstage. Natalia and Carmen Petrovich are being interviewed about their match against Shayna and Lola. Doesn't really add much to anything else. Which then we get into my favorite peoples on the planet: Idris and Nofe and Malik Blade. You know they're tr they're trying to figure out if they're gonna hype up, be there. <laughs> Whew, excuse me. Bless you. I feel like someone was talking about me. Anyways, <laughs> Idris and Malik are t talking with one another, figuring out if they're gonna be out there to cheer on Brinley in her match. Where Idris is like, "Hey, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta be positive." Malik's like, "I'm not sure," but. We'll talk about them when they come out later, which then also we get at, we already talked about Ava tells Oba that it's going to be a triple threat at Battleground. We also get a little graphic that hip hop artist Sexy Red is going to be in NXT next week. OK, look, <laughs> I am familiar with Sexy Red. I don't know why NXT is bringing her, but whatever. Now, if you have her go one, like Michael to Mike with Lash Legend, then I'm kind of here for it. <laughs> but other sure. than that, I'm just like, why are we? Anyways, so yeah. we leave all that nonsense behind and we get our final women's qualifier match. Jade Parker versus Brindley Reese. This went about as I thought it was going to Jade mm -hmm. Parker. I love you, Jada, but we still got to pick a better finisher for me. <laughs> yeah. I agree. But it this one looked a little bit better though. It did. Uh, maybe it she's did. Just trying out new things, I guess. Right. I thought the match was fun. It was still <laughs> short. 
Malik yep. and Idris do come out, but the bad <laughs> luck seems to be affecting everybody in that whole faction oh, because Brinley, yeah. unfortunately, was not able yeah. to use the power of positivity to her advantage. Yeah. Jada Parker picks up the victory here. Jada joins Lash, Soul, and Fallon in this ladder match at Battleground. Mm-hmm. I love Jada Parker. I think she has the whole entire package. Her mic skills are fantastic. I just wish the finisher was better, but that's something she can work on. And poor little Brindley, I was kind of rooting for her, but I I think I, in the back of my mind, I'm like, there's no way she's winning this. No. Jada's going on. Uh, yeah, I mean, when I saw that she, the two of them were, <laughs> I was like, oh, this is going to be a very quick match. And it was. <laughs> it was like, and it went exactly the way we thought it was going to go. And that's fine. But, you know, and I'm okay with this match. And I'm okay with, like, Brindley losing this match only because... Mm-hmm it was good to see Brinley up against someone like Jada, like someone who is obviously a little more experienced and a little more on like the powerhouse side. And I think it, I think it only makes Brinley better, mm-hmm. you know? And cause I really like her. I like her. And I love that trio that I like, a, I've said it before anytime they're on my screen, it just makes me happy. I mean, they're right. just great, you know, and and I really hope something good comes to them down the road. But yeah, this 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 match was not bad. It was pretty good, and it it went exactly the way we all we knew it was going to go. Right. So, so, but it'll be interesting to see Jada and Lash in the same ring together. Oh, like, I'm I'm low key excited. Uh-huh. Yeah, me too. I'm excited to see what happens with all of that, but. We move on from this match and we get another couple of back to back backstage stuff. First and foremost, Fallon Henley and Jasmine Nix having a short interaction. So there was that. <laughs> yeah. We get another vignette with Wendy Chu, who it seems that in this vignette she has finally woken up, which means hopefully she'll be returning to television screens on main or on regular NXT because she has been working out some matches in next level. I'm so mad. I'm like, I miss Wendy so bad, but you know, we got to figure some stuff out, (laughs) which then and I don't know whether I should be happy or still be frustrated because Ava (laughs) is seen on the phone in her office and she says that next week we're going to figure out who Roxanne is going to be fighting at (laughs) Battleground to defend that women's championship. I'm just like, okay. You're answering one of my biggest complaints that I've had the last couple of weeks because how is it that your main women's championship doesn't have a match yet for Battleground? So I'm like, okay, we're going to figure it out. I just don't like it because it doesn't matter who shows up because Mm -hmm. Roxanne is probably going to beat them. And uh, okay, so let's just let's just let's just air out the room real quick. Right. So uh, we know the reports. That at Heat Wave, it's supposed to be Roxanne versus an incoming Julia. If you remember, Julia made a pop-up appearance at Stand and Deliver. And we talked about it and how we were excited about it. So we know that Roxanne versus Julia is happening at Heat Wave. Because by that point, Julia will be done with doing the shows for the new stardom promotion, Marigold. And, you know, stateside and everything. I personally think that it's going to be rock at battleground. I think Roxanne's opponent is a returning core Jade, which is weird because then yeah. you're going to have a heel on heel dynamic, but yeah, I would be happy to see Cora back. But like I said, it doesn't matter what woman gets put in that position because Roxanne's going to beat them. And that kind of makes me sad. Yeah. 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 And I agree. Hmm. It kind of feels like a throwaway. You know, it's like I don't it doesn't feel like anybody. It's like they haven't they haven't built anyone to be a true contender against her. Right. And I and that bugs the crap out of me. Well, you know, and I and and here's my problem. And it's it's both a blessing and a curse, I guess. And because we have the new we have the new title. And everybody is focusing on that title. And I think that they're focusing too much on it or they're not too much. on. Well, no, yeah, too much on it that we're 
pulling attention away from the main women's title. Right. You know what I mean? And so it's like, if I was a, one of the women in the, in this in this organization, and I'm looking at everybody going for this sort of mid this mid level women's title, uh, I would be like, y'all y'all have fun because I'm gonna go and see if I can't kick Roxanne's butt and get yeah, her. Yeah, no one's going after her. Yeah, no one. And I'm like, why? Okay, so yeah, I don't. So and now and I feel bad for Roxanne because she's won this title. And they're not focusing on it. Like they've given her nothing. No, nope. no, no rivalry, like true rivalry. No, no story arc, no anything with it. And so they're just going to throw somebody in the ring with her at, at battleground. And which is unfair to whoever they throw in the ring with her as well. You know, it's unfair to both parties. And I mean, she earned the title. Let her give her something. Don't, don't just don't just throw a, a a lamb to the to the wolves, you know, which is what they do. Whoever they throw in the in the ring with her, because you know they'll go, oh, uh, any, meeny, miny, you, you know. And it's like, like, okay. And this is what frustrates me with this whole entire thing because I definitely think Lyra going over to main roster probably put a wrench in certain plans. Though, I'm going to be honest, I feel that we were at the end with Lyra's time in NXT anyways with the arc that we had. But I thought that Tatum would be the first one to get a shot at Roxanne for that title, given that Tatum has kind of been involved with the whole storyline up to this point. But now we're probably going to have her be in the ladder match. So, again, poor Roxanne. I agree with you, Will. This is like, Roxanne beat Lyra fair and square in probably the best match at Stand and Deliver. And for me personally, mm-hmm. the best match for WWE across both nights of WrestleMania and Stand and Deliver combined. And we have mm. not done anything of significance with her, which is not fair to Roxanne because she's such a phenomenal talent and she deserves a title reign with memorable matches. And so far, we haven't really found a woman who is going to be. Mm-mm. I feel like all the heavy hitters got called up to main roster. And the only person that I think who could keep up with Roxanne is currently scheduled to be in that ladder match for that North American championship Mm -hmm. match. And that's soul. Soul is like, and again, we could have thrown Thea in here, even though she's not ready to win and beat Roxanne yet. I just don't like the fact that it's going to be some random person because it doesn't matter who they pick because Julia is not showing up until heat wave in July. And it doesn't matter if it's Cora or not because Roxanne's not losing this title anytime soon. Mm-mm. It's, I agree. It's a whole thing, and it's it's frustrating for sure. Which then goes into Roxanne's promo, which is still kind of the same thing that we've been hearing from her the last weeks, anyways. And again, she's just spinning her wheels right now, trying while we're waiting to figure out what they're going to do with her. It's frustrating, and I'm, we're going to move on. We're also going to breeze past this because Lexus King gets his ass handed to him by Dante Chen. Of all people, I was just like, damn, you lost to kind of NXT's jobber. I'm kind of here for it. Lexus King losing to him. Right. I, I I'm like it. Lexus King's character. I know is supposed to be stupid, but damn, bro, you're not this dumb. Yeah. <laughs> Express Lexus thy King. feelings. You know, Lexus King. <sighs> I don't. And I've said, you know, I'm like a broken record. I am. And I just say it over and over and over again. I don't understand why he's here. I don't. I, I still don't. And how long has he been here now? Like. He, he debuted at Halloween Havoc back yeah. in October. So November, December, January, February, March, April, May. It's been seven months since yeah. his debut. And we still don't know what he's about. Like, I don't but know why he's here. We threw him in random storylines. He got involved in the Carmelo Trick Saga just because, which, you know, I thought would have went somewhere, but it didn't. Mm, no. Then we threw him into the Von Wagner, Mr. Stone, will they, won't they? They're ro- definitely roommate storyline. Mm-hmm. And then that didn't go anywhere. It's literally like, why are you here? Are you here just to be the creepy guy lurking in the shadows? Because that's just gross. I mean, he's gross, but 
that's even that makes it that would make him even grosser. I mean, <laughs> it's like bleh. so. I don't I don't know, and I'm like, and it's like they'll, and we have these like random. He has these random fights with people, and I just I don't know. I I I don't, I don't even know. I. I get so frustrated anytime I see that he's wrestling because I'm like, why? Why are you wrestling this person? Is it just to keep you busy? Is that what it is? <laughs> I, I'm, I don't know. Yeah, it's it's definitely a thing for sure. Mm. But Dante Chen wins, yep. which then leads into the backstage segment where Ava tells Robert Stone that he made a star tonight out of Dante. I was like, oh boy, here we go. <laughs> Let's see where this wow. wacky storyline is going to go. So. <laughs> so before all this, right after the match, Shayna and Lola are getting ready backstage and Shayna tells Lola she can't be shaking her booty all over like to keep the dancing to a minimum during the match. I was just like, oh, I see where this is going and I hate it immediately. <laughs> I hated it. We're going to get mad because someone's shaking their butt. I was like, all right, fine, whatever. So then we get this really, really long <laughs> in-ring segment with Trick Williams, who is here to claim that he did not attack Noah and Dar, and I believe Trick Williams. Mm -hmm. But then he has this back and forth with Metaphor, and Lash, girl, Lash, I was like, you know something. You know he's innocent, but why are we not saying anything? Is Noah and Dar telling you not to say anything? Why are you not saying anything? And before we can get any answers, this is where I have my biggest other issue of the whole entire night, Gallus comes out and lays out Trick Williams for no apparent reason. I'm like, so Joe Coffey is involved in this North American picture, but he's also going to be involved in this main title picture. Like, why are why is he double dipping? Like, what is mm -hmm. happening? Mm hmm. I, I don't. I don't. I just. <sighs> <sighs> Why in God's name are we laying Trick Williams out every time he's on stage or on this in the ring? Why is it? This is the second time this has happened. Noam Dar got a sucker punch off on him. And now the Gallus boys come in and lay him out. I'm like, what is going on? He is a freaking champion. And we're literally making him look like he's like weak as water. It infuriates me because, you know, I'm sorry, but this this guy, I was about to say kid, this guy went through hell and back to earn this title. And we're treating him like, eh, whatever. I'm sorry. What the hell is going on? That's what I want to know. I don't. And, you know, and I love that he and Lash are an item like in real life. I love that. But you I know, don't want to hear about it every I, single no. week. <laughs> and I, I don't even think it should be part of the story. Because now it just makes it weird. I'm, and this is my thing. Unless they're working on a metaphor split, then I get it. But other than that, it makes no sense. Mm -hmm. And it just makes it makes Trick look weak. And it that is driving me insane. Because, the, like I said, the guy went through hell and back. And, and you can't make him look weak all the damn time. And I'm sorry, he got sucker punched by Noam Dar. Really? I love me some Noam. But I, that's one of those, like, you know, pop, and, it's, and then Trick just sort of shakes it off and, like, smacks him down. You know, I mean, it's literally, it's like, I... <laughs> And I get it, you know, if you get sucker punched, it, it, it can, you can knock the, the biggest of men down, but it's like, then I was like, one time is okay, I guess. But twice, three times? You make that boy look weak, and that, that's irritating me. And I, I don't understand it. No, and on top of that, too, like, I was like, okay, no one's going to be Trick's first feud since becoming champion. Cool, I'm here for it. But you removed Noam Tar from the feud for the last two weeks now. Mm -hmm. And and I'm not saying that your champions always has to be the ones that come out on top. Like sometimes champions need to get their butt whooped because that's how storytelling goes. But for two weeks now, 
you've had Trick be laid out and he hasn't gotten a chance to get a lick back in. And yeah. this is so this is so overbooked because you're throwing the Gallus boys into the mix, who to me have no correlation into the storyline that we were telling with metaphor and trick. Like it's overcomplicating things with the need to do so. And like I, the same thing applies, like I said, for Roxanne here. You have Trick has gained, has gotten over with the fans so organically. And despite how certain things felt between the trick and Carmelo end of the story was kind of like up and down at the end of it. I was super happy to see trick win that title and become our new NXT champion. But you threw all that work that we've been doing for the last year to build up trick Williams to get to this point, And you threw it out the window in the last two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what frustrates me. I was like, mm -hmm. how you going, how you going to have your, Two main champions, an African American male and a Latina woman, and you're not the way that you're booking them is ridiculous. Oh, <laughs> I'm it's, like, it's obscene. It's nuts. And once again, Trick is laid out on the floor with Joe Coffey holding the NXT champion title championship over Trick Williams to end the segment. I don't know what we're doing with Trick for battleground i don't even know if he's even gonna have a match at this point which is kind of wild to think about you know here's my thing why isn't like josh briggs going after that fair almost like i don't know what's happening right now i mean seriously i mean we've had no major like i mean truly like and no one is not i don't really consider that but i mean like we've never had we haven't had any true like challenges against trick since he's become champ like real i mean i'm talking real champ i'm talking like real challenges not just these folks that are like oh let's let's challenge him to keep him busy i'm talking like true legit like josh briggs i mean if he's like well i can't defeat oba femi like, hey you know what trick williams is over there let me go after that title if josh briggs is so title happy why isn't he going over there i mean i i wouldn't mind watching that i'd watch that fight you know, or, you know, Ivar going over after that, or, you know, or, I, I don't, I don't, why, why are they not utilizing their champions correctly? And you're right. And it's because, you know, we've got three, I mean, and we got three major championship titles with POCs. You know, we've got Obafemi, we've got Roxanne and we've got Trick. Oh, and I mean, we've got Axiom, it's half of one. Right. I mean, we've got these, you know, and, and, you know, and I'll give it at least they're giving the tag team folks something to to chew on. But I mean, it's like then I, I just like I don't understand why they're not utilizing them. I mean, I'm sorry, I'd be putting all my focus in there, you know, and all the other stuff should be getting people in a place where they can challenge a championship, you know, but we're I think I, I here's my I think. I think NXT is focusing too much on stories, trying to make everything, you know, its own story, as opposed to, you know, having Thea Hale create this new Thea Hale while she's like going after a major title. You know, why does it have to be, let's put these in it? And, you know, all we, we want to see the, I want to see them wrestle each other for something substantial. Right. You know, you know what I mean? If like Sol Ruka's like, I'm going to go after Roxanne. And then Thea's like, well, you know what? I want Roxanne too. So why don't we fight and see who gets to go against her? Then I'd be like, yes, please. Because it's like, they're going after a title. Not like, Hey, Sol, I got, I don't like the way you looked at me yesterday. So I'm going to fight you. I, I don't care. Do I want to see him fight? Of course I do. But I don't care about the random ass story. Let's just, it need I think the titles need to be the story. I really do. And I know and I hate that, you know, sometimes that, oh, it, you know, why can't they just fight because they have personal rivalries? I'm not saying they can't, but put something important at the end of it. You know, not just because. <laughs> so I don't know. I, I that's me and that's my that's my soapbox and I'm sticking to it. Yeah. <laughs> And know. 
Yeah, we'll we'll see where this leads in terms of battleground and everything like that. So we get into our main event of the evening, where this is a tag team match. Shayna Baszler and Lola Vice taking on Natalia the Boat and Quentin <laughs> Petrovich. So yeah. I would have been more excited about this match had we not just seen these. I yep. thought was the ending to this whole entire thing in the NXT Underground match at Spring Breakin'. But no, and I was like, and you know, at the beginning of the match, I was like, oh, okay, so like Shayna and Lola are going to win. Nope, NXT proved me wrong because Natalia and Carmen pull up the win here. I was just like, all that work you did for Lola turned into nothing. I was so, I was more pressed than a panini by the end of this. And then Lola turns on Shayna and then the two fight and we're getting an NXT underground match at to battleground. I'm like, we just had one not that long ago. Like what is happening? <laughs> and I get why they're doing it because we're going to be in the UFC complex. This is UFC and NXT with WWE partnering together. But I'm like, no, this did not need to happen like this. <laughs> I smell corporate fingerprints all over the place. <laughs> I, you know, I, I kind of, I kind of zoned out of this match, you know, I, I, because I feel like we've already seen it. I'm, which technically we have already seen it. So, I mean, it's just like, I'm like, and again, I'm like, why? I, I didn't understand the purpose of it. And again, I don't. I don't know. I, I like all of these women. Of course I do, because I love our women wrestlers. And I just I, I I just don't understand what they're doing with them. You know, I just don't understand it. I, I don't. And I get frustrated. And I probably shouldn't. But I do. I just, I don't know why. I, I take it personally, and I guess I shouldn't. <laughs> Well, we, we we can take it personally because it's like anything. And, you know, this is this was the biggest talking point and learning lesson of what I took away from the wrestling convention. While we were there just to table and just to, you know, network and get our podcasts out there, we all got an opportunity because, you know, we got a kick in the rear by one of the uh, by this older gentleman there that told us, don't be afraid. Go ask these wrestlers for interviews. Promote yourself that way. And it's because we have invested so much time and effort in watching these folks and, you know, putting our time, blood, sweat, tears, like money. Sometimes when we're supporting them with merchandise. I just don't like when companies waste my time with certain things, booking decisions mm -hmm. and things like that. And I feel that that's what's been happening in NXT hosts stand and deliver with yeah. the draft and people getting moved to main roster and just injuries. Also, like we've been pulling a lot of the stops out. I'm still interested to see how Battleground turns out, but right now, comparing to how we built Battleground last year to how we built Battleground this year is completely different. And I feel that's been the consistent problem for the last couple of pay-per-views. I think the last NXT pay-per-view that I thought had a fun build was up to No Mercy last year. And then post No Mercy leading into where we are now, it's been so up and down. It's been kind of nuts. Yeah. I agree. So, yeah. Well, Will, we reached the end of this week's NXT. Let's get into the empanada ratings, and then we're going to make this big announcement because this is changing the landscape of BC WrestlePod, but not really. <laughs> not kind really. Of. It is, but... But, you know. Change you know, is good. Change is good. Change. Yeah, so... I'm going to give this a six and a half empanadas out of 10. And this is, this is where I wish Andrew was here because the wrestling itself wasn't bad. I just hated all the extra stories that we're telling and the backstage segments. And the, the fact that our two major champions in Roxanne and a trick are kind of like non-existent in the builds of battleground is kind of not okay with me. So yeah. I give this a six and a half out of 10. I, I gave it, I was actually about a six ish. And that's, that was, I, it, it, for very, for, I, I gave it a six. 
That's <laughs> like because otherwise I'll get back on a soapbox and I'm not going to jump on a soapbox again. So. <laughs> It's, yeah, yeah it, it it's frustrating, you know, because we're building to Battleground. I'm still excited to see what Battleground has to offer, but it makes it tough when, you know, your build has been all over the place for this. So, all right, we've been teasing this the whole entire evening, so let, let's drop the bomb for the kids to kind of tear apart, I guess. Is the, the, all righty. So we here at BC WrestlePod are huge supporters of wrestling. And when we started this journey all the way pretty much a year ago, almost back in June of 2023, when we put the teams together, and at this time it was just five of us. So it was myself, JVL, the professor, Adolfo, and Minnie. And we divided up the shows. I ended up being the only co-host who reviewed NXT and TNA by himself. And it wasn't until half a year later where I picked where we picked up Andrew and Will, who were hitchhiking on the side of the road in, you know, figuratively speaking. And they became my co-hosts for NXT and TNA. And that is a bond that I personally love. However, with any entity, there comes a time where you have to reevaluate and you have to figure out, you know, the path that you're currently on, does it require some change? And in this case, the three of us got to talking over the last couple of days, and we feel that it is time for a change here at BC WrestlePod. So no, we are not breaking up the trio that is myself, Will, and Andrew, but we have collectively decided that we will continue to cover NXT, and we will cover Battleground, but... <laughs> Once Battleground is said and done, we are going to be retiring the NXT review banner and we're going to put it away because for a variety of reasons, from individual things that have been happening within WWE, as well as our frustrations over the last couple of months with NXT, I want to be able to review a product where I can have my ups and downs and not just want to strangle the NXT half the time for his booking decisions. So with that being said, the DDT review team has decided that once Battleground is done and over with, Battleground will be the last NXT thing that we cover here at BC WrestlePod. But what does that mean for your review? Well, that's the other conversation we've been having. And while we still got to finalize some details after we review TNA this week, I'm pretty sure it's safe to say that we have decided that moving forward post Battleground, after we're done with NXT Battleground, the DDT team, and we might change the name, who knows what that happens with that, we are going to be reviewing another federation. And after research and a lot of back and forth, myself, Will, and Andrew are proud to announce that we are going to be reviewing something completely different for us and your two your Wednesday videos your crew in which NXT used to be we will now be covering CMLL the Lucha Libre Federation in Mexico so we are going this is our first entry into the world of Lucha Libre and me Will and Andrew are super excited now, when I put this announcement out to the rest of the boys of what we're doing, there's one host in particular I would not be surprised if he asked to be a part of the review, which I am all for mm -hmm. him to be a part of because that would be fantastic. But at, in three weeks, we will be so we will be retiring NXT, and in its place will be CMLL reviews, which I'm super excited. I can't wait. It's going to be something different. And I don't see a lot of people covering CMLL and Lucha Libre anyway. So this is going to be different for us. But I'm excited because it's going to be a new adventure and change is necessary. But fear not. The NXT team is still going to be around at least for the next three weeks. And we're going to fulfill our duties and cover all the way up to Battleground. And then we will be moving on to CMLL after that. So with that being said... Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode of the DDT Review. 
when we come back next week, we will still be on the road towards Battleground and we will be inching ever so closely to the final pay-per-view. So for myself, Will, and Andrew, and the rest of the BC Wrestle Pod boys, remember, take care of yourself, love one another, stay by Conic. More importantly than anything, you always deserve to finish your story. We will see you next week, but until then, ta-ta for now. Billy Stark's outro. Uh.